We are now ready to start creating a new document. So I'm going to have InDesign open here and I'm going to hit Control N on my keyboard to bring up the new document dialog box. Now alternatively, I can go up to the file menu, go to new and new document, but because I like to be as quick as I can, I like to use the keyboard shortcut Control N to bring up this dialog box. So the very first thing that I'm presented with is the document preset, which is the default preset. Now the second thing that I want to do within the document window or new document window is tell InDesign what my intention is or how I intend to use this particular document. Now we'll see here under the default preset that it defaults to print and this means that I'm typically going to work within a CMYK color space for things such as brochure, postcard, flyer, that sort of thing. But new in InDesign CS5, I have the ability to work on documents for the web. And I can specify this as my intent. And when I do so, I'm telling InDesign to set this document's preferences to work in an RGB color space, right? Because when we're designing for the web, whether it's a web page or a Swift file or anything alike, it is always RGB. But for this, I'm going to select print or go ahead and leave it at print. And underneath that, I have the option to select the number of pages that I'm going to have in my document. So if I'm creating an offering memorandum and I have some idea of how many pages are going to be in that document, then I can click in that window and select a number like 18 for an example and type it in there. But for this training, I'm only going to have one. And if I was going to use numbering in my pages, I could select the page that I want to start on. And InDesign will open up to that specific page. For this, I'm going to start at page one. We also have two checkboxes off to the side here, facing pages and master text frame. Now the facing pages is great if you're going to work in an, in, an InDesign document that is perhaps like a magazine where you have multiple pages that are facing each other. But when we're working on simple collateral, such as a brochure or postcard, we might just unselect that and leave it unselected. The master text frame is something that you would typically find in Quirk Express. And because Adobe likes to convert Quirk Express users over to InDesign, they've placed this very similar button to what you might be used to in Quirk Express, but we'll hardly ever use that. So we're not gonna dive into it. We're just gonna leave that unchecked as well. Underneath that, we have the page size. And if I select the drop down menu, it's going to show me all the typical US page sizes for letter, legal, tabloid, letter half, legal half. Then we have the European styles, like, such as A4. And we have some non standard sizes, such as US business card, or we can work on a compact disc design as well. Underneath those, we have the web size presets. So if I was going to work on this document for web, that I can select or, you know, something small print as well, but these are typically web. 600 by 300 all the way to 1280 by 800. And if I wanted to make it larger for some reason, although 1280 by 800 on the web is pretty huge, then I can go to custom page size, give it a name. I can change the width and the height, specify the orientation, click add, then click OK, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to show you another way to save this preset. So once we've selected the page size by default, we can also manipulate it here by going up or down. But we are creating a custom page at that point. And we also have boxes here for the orientation, landscape, or portrait. And we have columns that we can modify so we can specify the number of columns or specify the gutter for the columns and margins. We can also specify the bleed and slug. Now the bleed and slugs by default is usually hidden, but if I come up to the more options dialog box, then it's gonna show it here. If you're not familiar with columns and guides and margins and bleed guides, don't worry about that right now. We're gonna focus on that in a later movie. 
So just know that if you, when you're creating a new document, this is where you can set them. And I'm going to hit fewer options to hide those bleed settings. And, and then I can always bring them up again later if I need to. So let's say this is the custom preset for, or this is the preset that we normally use for a brochure. What if it took me 30 or more seconds to create these presets? Well, I may not want to always spend 30 seconds creating my own presets here or specifying what those are going to be. So I want to save this so I can use it again. So I'm going to click the Save Presets dialog button. And here it's going to default to document preset number one. We can just type over that. So I'm going to type Stevens brochure one and click OK. So now that preset is always in there. I can select it on the fly and I'm going to click OK. That creates a new document in a tab for us. And again, if we ever wanted to create a new document, we can hit Control N on our keyboard. Here's our preset that we created. We just select OK and now it's going to create a second document in the tab. I'm going to go ahead and close out that second the second document. Now what if you created a document and then you realize after you've created it that something isn't right, you need to make some changes. Like you don't like the orientation of this page as a portrait, you want to change it to landscape. If I go up to the file menu and select document setup, we'll see that the intent is grayed out. So I can't necessarily change this from print to web because I know I'm working in print but I can change the number of, cha of pages, change the start page, and here I can change the size, and I can change the orientation. So if I change the orientation in this page, we then switch to landscape. Now, we've created a preset. One of the other things that I can do is go up to the File menu, Document Presets, and I can either define a new preset or take a look at the presets settings and I can edit the preset, create a new preset off of that preset, delete the preset, or even load a preset. So if I downloaded from like the InDesign user group, I can put it in here as well. But I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. So now we have created a new document. We can start working in InDesign.